Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Sean and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Sunil. And I'm Sean. Otaku, otaku, number <laughs> But it's not. It's not. It's aim for the ace, which is the same thing except it's tennis now. We got a sports movie from Tokyo Movie Shinsha, Japan, which is the same people that brought us attack number one, but now it's aim for the ace and it's tennis. You know. Oh my God, after, I needed this. Yeah, after the last, you know, several movies that have all been slightly traumatizing in their own way. Oh man, was this a, a welcome sight. Mm. Like, I went into it going, oh, sports anime movie. I hope this is just as silly as attack number one. And it answered not only did it answer my prayers, but it was essentially the exact same thing as Attack Number One, <laughs> but all condensed into one movie and better than Attack Number One in basically every single way. Yeah. Like, the presentation here is really good. Yeah, it, well, for one thing, it was actually made to be a movie as mm -hmm. compared to a television show that got turned into three movies. Right. Like, this is a movie first and foremost. Yeah. Doesn't mean it has, like, necessarily the greatest pacing or leaves it good spots. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, um, it definitely feels segmented in its stories. Like, we got about halfway through, and I was like, all right, well, the first arc has ended, and now we're jumping into the second arc. And then it kind of jumps into a third arc at the end of the second. And it just stops. And then it just stops, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's got some problems as far as it being a movie goes. But, like, the presentation is really nice. I, I actually really like the art style for mm -hmm. this as compared to attack number one. There's going to be a lot of comparisons um, from this to attack number one because they are so similar and not first just all, in the fact that they're sports anime uh, so shoujo movies. The first thing is uh, attack number one had the volleyball eyes where it was a volleyball over a tennis or, or like a, 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 a net. Right. Every character in this movie has tennis eyes. They it's have, not as explicit it's not as, as explicit, the volleyball eyes. But they have three white orbs in their eyes for no reason because you don't need that many light spots on somebody's light eyes. Mm -hmm. So everybody has three tennis balls in their eyes at all times. Well, and they have like this little like streak in their eye as well. And it could be Sean and I just reading into it a little bit too much. Like because we've been exposed to attack number one volleyball <laughs> eyes oh, if you miss the attack number one reviews please do yourself a favor and go back to those they are a delight mm -hmm. uh this was yeah 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 so similarities um well, how about uh, yes how about we go through a story synopsis and bring up similarities similarities as they happen okay go ahead all right this one th there are differences there are differences. So we have a main like, character. It's about tennis. Yeah, it's about tennis. We have the main character who loves tennis, which is similar to the volleyball girl. But this time, like, her school actually supports uh, female tennis. Like, in fact, their team is like 116 students or something. Yeah, Which is a lot an egregious of... amount of people on one sports team, especially something like tennis, when there's four or five people that get to play in any of the meets. Yeah. Yeah. Granted, Sean and I also came from a very small school, so we don't know what it's like having... A large sport. Like, I can only assume that this school has, like, thousands of students. Oh, it has to have. Yeah. Anyways, there's a new male sports coach that is coming in to sports the... Uh, to coach the girls. The sports the, the coach. And... He's an asshole, and he doesn't talk much, and he abuses the students 
Just like in. attack number one. He comes in and he immediately is just like, this female coach you have here, she's not pushing you hard enough. Run 20 laps, girls. And everyone's like, oh, wow, he's so like brave and pushing us to do our best although they're also the girls are also like this is fucking bullshit <laughs> like the best friend of the main character is like i hate this new guy <laughs> he may be hot and stuff but i hate him yeah she's specifically like i really like thin guys thin tall guys and then she's like i don't care if he's tall and thin f this guy <laughs> Uh, oh god and so there's also a rival character on the team and she's like a rich girl and the daughter of the dude in charge of like the japanese tennis corporation or whatever <laughs> i don't because of course because of course so yeah. she's like super hoity-toity and like the best girl on the team and she hates the main character because the coach has decided to single out the main character even though she's a freshman and she, and she sucks. She sucks really bad. But the coach is just like, nah, this girl, she's going to be one of the main characters that plays. And so he pushes the main character to ridiculous extremes to the point where she's like crying and super beat up. And at one point she quits the team because she just can't take this abuse anymore. Yeah. And then she calls and then the coach. She like and comes she's back. She's like, comes back. And. <laughs> like she's in multiple competitions and she sucks and loses but the coach is just like nah you're staying on the team and, and look i want to make this clear right now normally i would not normally when this kind of subject comes up a student being abused by their teacher i would not be so giddy and laughing about this but just the fact that it's so similar to attack number one and we've dealt with some really traumatic bullshit in the last few movies. I needed this like campy. We knew what to expect. Oh yeah, like this movie, what it is saying about like women in sports and coaches and like everything about that, I do not support 1000% but God, this was a joy to watch. God, this coach even at one point in the movie is like, women are weaker than men, so they have to train much harder. Oh, yeah. Because sexism is incredibly rampant, as you might expect, and it's bullshit and dumb. Well, yeah, and he's... Oh, my God. There is no way you could watch this movie and look at how this coach treats our main character. And, like, the other adults in this situation look at him like dude you're crazy but like there is no way that if this situation was in real life that people wouldn't be going dude are you sleeping with this student yeah because he singles her out to such an egregious degree it's like yeah no Dude, you're definitely doing something very not okay on the side. Right. Yeah. And her like, special treatment is ridiculous. There is definitely a romantic context, like your subtext, mm -hmm. like put on to the student teacher dynamic. And, you know, their very first interaction has like all the Trope. tropes of like a rom-com situation where she like stumbles and bumps into it and trips down the stairs and he just like hands her her tennis racket and walks away mm -hmm. and like oh who's this guy he she hot. nearly He's decapitates like... him with a tennis ball on her first meeting <laughs> <laughs> out on the court and that's when he chooses no this is the one oh well, yeah she's the girl i'm going to single out yeah. Speaking of singling her out, mm -hmm. by the end of the movie, like, I don't think we need to go into, like, broad whole... specifics, but yeah. eventually the hoity-toity girl, like... Senpai. The senpai girl finally is like, nah, I respect you and stuff because you can hit a ball every now and again. <laughs> You've and, gotten better. Yeah, and the main character eventually is getting better and is, like, one of the best in high school girls 
tennis in Japan specifically. Mm -hmm. So she gets chosen for the team to go to the American or to the worldwide high school girls tennis competition that is being held in America. America. Now stop me if you've heard this one before. Okay, but that's not like like every single plot beat of this. She even something... goes to like a specific training camp. Oh yeah, like a for tennis this. camp. <laughs> <laughs> for this competition. Like, these are all things that happen in Attack Number 1, but they're happening in this tennis movie. <laughs> yeah, well, and all these characters, too, like, are... They're all very tropey, and they're all, like, these things happen in the other one, too. The only difference here is our main character actually does suck and does isn't just, like... Already good. Already at good at volleyball. No, she does suck, and she in this case. she has to get better at tennis over the course of the movie. Right. So, which like, I think that, makes her a lot more likable. Yes, to she's be not fair. just like god tier at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, the other character was not god tier, but she was already really good, and yeah. then she just gets even better. Yeah. Yeah, she gets made captain like second time she plays volleyball or whatever. <laughs> Either way, it's revealed at the end of the movie that. Coach guy is totally in love with her. Shock and surprise. Yeah. And the reason... God. <sighs> Japan. Seriously, what the fuck? The reason... Stay classy, Japan! He's in love with her is because she reminds him... God, I almost forgot about this. ...of his mother, who... And then this is the part where I kind of whited out briefly because I was screaming... Um, so I don't know if it's, reminds me of his mother who left a man or was left by a man and then she was either just cried a lot or he respected her. I can't remember the specifics of he, if he liked or disliked his mom, but either way, he's beating this girl into submission and making her the best at tennis ever because she reminds him of his mother. Who for, was not strong enough to... Take care of him or something. Right. So Again, he wants to make her a better version of his mom. Who's good at tennis. Who's good... Yeah. Like, <laughs> what do you want me to make of that? And then he collapses because he have, has onset leukemia. Yep. And then he's in the hospital. And his sister, who is also like his stepsister... Is like, nah, he's fine. Don't worry. Go off to your competition on the plane. So they all get on the plane and they fly to America. And since er, the coachman in the bed is just like, writes down a note and says, main character girl, aim for the ace. Blech. And he, then he dies. Yeah. Also, yeah. there's this subplot where our main character is starting to like form this crush slash relationship with this older... Um, high school tennis player boy and he gives her Some like metal thing well it's like a it's like a locket or a necklace you know it's it's some token of affection that's supposed to be like hey good luck mm -hmm. and uh then she accidentally drops it while coachman is around and coach takes it and coach is like i'll just hold on to this i'll hold on to this and i'm like why why? But you have complete control over this girl's life. You gotta take stuff from her boyfriend now, too. It's a completely terrible manipulative relationship. It's awful. Oh, yeah. It's really bad. Um, And then, so at the end, when he's dying, her crush boyfriend comes in and, and the coach gives it back, gives to, it back to him. And he's like, give this back to main character girl. You'll know when the time is right. And boyfriend's just kind of like, how'd you get this? Yeah. Like, Why well, do you have this? <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Yeah. And yeah, then the movie ends with the plane flying away. Like, yeah, we don't even get to the tournament. No, no, no. There's no tournament. It's just she never finds out about this. The movie dude, ends. Dude dies. She's on plane. That's the end of the movie. Obviously, this is being set up for like a sequel or something. And mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll see it or if there was a sequel made. Probably. I don't know. Either way. I don't think... I, as far as I saw, I don't think there was this... Um, this was originally a manga, mm -hmm. shock and surprise, that ran from 1973 
1980. Okay. It had 18 volumes. Then it also had an anime that came out before this the previous year. So 1978 through 79 that had about 25 episodes. And then it's had other adaptations over the years. In mm. fact, I think one of the more recent ones was a uh, TV drama in 2005. Like a live action TV drama? I didn't look that much into it. Okay. Yeah. But that was the more recent adaptation. And I think that means it's time to start going into some more background about this. Sure. This was actually a really, really successful shoujin. Shoujo. I believe it. Yes. It is considered a classic of both sports anime and shoujo and considered uh, the reason for these tropes being as popular as they are. Like the the rich bitch who, you know, is your senpai mm-hmm. and way better than you. Clumsy girl who's actually super talented main character underdog protagonist. And, <laughs> but of course, the hard-ass coach who actually has tragic backstory and meets an untimely demise, but encourages the main character forward. Wow. Yeah, which is hilarious because basically a lot of these things were also in Attack Number One as well. I mean, to some extent, not not they're this not, exact yeah, formula. Yeah, not not those exact formulas because there was never like the rich girl specifically, right? There... But the one girl with the curly red hair, she was kind of like that. I don't remember that one. Yeah, she. I mean, she's like the rival girl, and oh, then they become she was best a friends. She was the foreign girl. Like, yeah, she was the American transfer student or whatever. Exactly. So, yeah, there's definitely like the rival girl, and then mm-hmm. the next, the new rival girl, and then the newest rep, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, the coach never had a tragic backstory in Attack Number One. Did he not? He didn't. He was just a hard ass. I I mix the coach and the boyfriend from attack number one a lot because they were basically the same thing. Yeah, the boyfriend died. Yeah, the boyfriend died, not the coach. Oh, I still can't believe that happened. That was so (laughs) silly. Uh... This mangaka, or the mangaka for this series, was uh, Sumika Yamamoto. Not the same person who wrote Attack Number One. Okay, I mean their art style is different. Very enough, different. So that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, Attack Number One was written by uh, Chicago uh, Urano, and that Attack Number One because they're so similar. Yet again, there's the, that's why we have all these comparisons. Uh, that manga was written in sixty eight to seventy. Okay. So it was. Uh, a couple year gap before this one started up. Right. Aim for the Ace was a manga that ran from 1973 to 80. Yeah, you you said that already. Right. Sorry. So, yeah. Uh, definitely, you know, of course, there's a possibility that, you know, Yamamoto had seen Attack Number One. And, and was inspired, inspired by, by that one. Uh, they were both distributed by the same magazine, Margaret. I mean, that makes sense. It's probably a shoujo mm-hmm. uh, magazine. Yep. Uh, and yeah, like I said, this was a really successful manga. One of the best-selling shoujo manga of all time with over 15 million copies sold. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Wow. I will say, other good things that this adaptation does compared to Aim for the Ace or something like that. Or- mm-hmm. Attack number one does. Yeah. (laughs) This is aim for the ace. Uh, Is I enjoy the, just like the characterization of the main character and her her best friend. And it feels very 70s because like, for some reason she just hangs out. Awesome glasses (laughs) and she (laughs) fell bottoms. Like she sports a good look. Mm -hmm. Like, no, no joke. She's got fashion on point. (laughs) And like her and her friend just like, 
do things in the city. They just hang out sometimes. They go to the arcade and play really retro video games. Uh, they go to the movie theaters. They get food and like in like a uh, video game uh cafes or stuff where like there's games in the table that you can play and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I feel way more attached to these characters than I did after watching all three Attack Number 1 movies. Oh, absolutely. Like the characterization is just, just done better and they feel like people. Yeah, they feel like people. Um like if there is ever a sequel to this that Sean and I need to watch, I'm going to be happy to see it even with all the the oh why Japan moments. Mm -hmm. Um, this was fun. And another thing I want to point out with this movie, like it really, really is not just a step above the presentation for Attack Number One because the presentation on Attack Number One was not very good. It was edited pretty sloppily. The animation's not all that great. It mm -hmm. had a few good moments and like action moments. But, like, this movie is consistently really solid. It's great to look at. It's visually amazing, stunning, great animation. Yeah, like, it's no blockbuster. No, absolutely know. not. But, like, for a sports anime adaptation, you know, like, this is really well done. And there's some really fun compositions mm -hmm. they pull off where they try to... Um, Make it, it feels like they're um, giving homage to the manga. And it, like, I don't know for sure because I haven't read the manga. But like, they do a lot of like panels on top of the action mm -hmm. in really interesting ways. And some of those aren't don't work great, as well. but none of them ever feel bad. Yes. And then when they do come off really good, it's like, it's really quite a modern presentation. Like, this is something I would expect to see as something more er experimental done today. Yeah. Rather than seeing it now in 1979. Yeah. Huh. So that's really cool. It's good. Mm -hmm. I'd Honestly, suggest it's checking it out. Laugh. Yeah, it's great for a laugh. Um... It's got some fun characters, some good animation, and some great designs, and some really interesting um, compositing work that I think make it worth checking out. Mm hmm Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And with that, I think that's going to be it for this review. So join us back here next time as we finally leave Japan. We've been there for... <laughs> oh, my God, we many have. Many moves. Many movies now. Oh, my God. It's like three or four in a row. Uh, three, because... Okay. The one before Polar Cubs was Prince Nezha from China. So, right, right, yeah. right. Anyways, there's been a lot of Japanese movies this year already, yeah. which is unsurprising. Uh -huh. But let's go to America. All right. Because we're going to watch the Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner movie. I already know this is a compilation film. Yeah, so... We'll see. We'll see what it has to offer. Yeah. See you then.